Hello everybody, greetings from Chennai in India. Last time I spoke about an essential trace metal, selenium. This time around, I will be saying a few words about a non-essential trace metal, thallium. It's a role in human health and disease. Thallium is the 81st element. It is so called because of the green color emitted in flame spectrometer. Because thallium in Greek means green shoot. It was first identified in 1861 by a British chemist, William Crooker. The same year, a French chemist, Claude Auguste Lamy, he isolated the element. As usual, there was a little acrimony between the British and the French chemists as to who should get the credit for having dis discovered the element. The crooks claimed that it is a very safe metal to handle because it is used in small quantities. On the other hand, Lamy, right from the beginning, he claimed that it is a treacherous metal because from the day he discovered it, his own personal health started deteriorating. And he also fed it to dogs, cats, birds, and invariably they all died. In the early 20th century, the Food and Drug Administration Department of uh, United States, FDA, as we know it, was in its infancy and it had no meaningful authority. The manufacturers of drugs, chemicals and cosmetics were only expected to list the ingredients on the containers with no mention at all of the putative toxic effects. Thallium was initially popular as an effective pesticide, especially as a rat poison. A familiar household brand of rat poison available in every home in the United States was Thal Rat, which you could buy in any store. It worked like a charm. The pesky rats died in hundreds. But then the small carnivores, the birds which fed on these dead rats, they also died. In one instance, wheat grains mixed with the rat poison was inadvertently used by a group of farmers for making bread. And seven of these farmers who ate that bread, they died. Then the government sat up and they put some restrictions on unlicensed use of thallium as a pesticide. Thallium was found to be an excellent depilatory and soon numerous brands of thallium containing hair removers flooded the market. The manufacturers claimed that the amount of thallium used in these preparations was very small and since it was only being used on small areas of the skin, they were unlikely to cause harm. But in the 1930s, Journal of American Medical Association reported several cases of adverse effects to externally used thallium containing depilatories. One woman applied it to the chin and became totally bald. Another patient in Minnesota used a thallium containing cream on her upper lip and she had to be hospitalized since she developed weakness in the legs besides losing scalp hairs in clumps. Based on many such anecdotal reports, the AMA warned that thallium-containing depilatories were a menace to public health. The government at this juncture chose to ignore the warning of the AMA and thallium-containing uh, depilatories flourished. They were popular because they worked well in removing unwanted hairs and were strongly endorsed by the various women's magazines, including the popular Vogue. One advertisement claimed that it made hairs disappear painlessly like snow on an unexpectedly warm morning. Therapeutically, thallium was used in, the, in TB patients in 1890 to reduce the uncomfortable night sweats, despite the patients complaining that they were losing their hair. In the pre grisio fulvin era, tinea capitis or fungus in the scalp in children was practically incurable till they attained puberty when spontaneously the condition remitted. The only way of getting rid of the disease at that point in time was to remove the infected hairs manually one by one. But this was very inconvenient and uh, x-rays of course worked but then they were found to be very hazardous. So thallium was used as a single dose of 8 milligram per kilogram. It worked in quickly getting rid of the hair and along with it the fungus also. But then a few of the toddlers died. Diagnostically thallium isotope is still used in uh, nuclear scan centers for assessing cardiac function. I myself underwent this procedure about 
10 years ago. In industry, thallium is used to strengthen the filaments of tungsten lamps, in the manufacture of eyeglass lenses, and it gives a sparkle to artificial gemstones. It also used to be an ingredient of the old mercury thermometers. So it has very wide applications in industry. Thallium being colorless and odorless is an ideal poison. It also mixes easily with coffee, tea and cocoa. Unlike arsenic, which has a gritty metallic taste and hence has to be mixed only with wine. So in a way, in many ways, thallium is superior to arsenic to poison individuals. Indeed, the great mystery story writer Dame Agatha Christie, she used thallium as a poison in her murder thriller, The Pale Horse, published in 1961. Signs and symptoms of thallium poisoning. When a large dose of thallium is ingested, nausea, vomiting, trembling, shortness of breath, with collapse at death in a few days occurred. The signs thus resembled an acute viral pneumonia. In more chronic cases, uh, lasting for several weeks, the most important and striking sign is total loss of hair. Patients may also have diarrhea, pain in the legs, tremors, delirium and coma, simulating encephalitis and to a certain extent dry beriberi. The dramatic and marked baldness has convicted many poisoners and brought them to the gallows. Autopsy. Singularly unhelpful because all that you see is a non-specific gastritis. But in the forensic lab, using a photo flame spectroscopy, the diagnostic brilliant green color of thallium lights up all the tissues in the body like a Christmas tree. The metal stays in the body for several months after the patient's death. Pathogenesis. Thallium possesses an atomic structure very similar to potassium. And so the metal rapidly moves into the potassium uptake channels, into the nuclei of the cells, where it disrupts the cell metabolism. Thiamine synthesis is blocked by thallium. And that is why some of the signs and symptoms mimic those of dry beriberi. Management. As I said for selenium, dimercaprol, that is BIL, British anti-suicide, is of no use in the treatment of thallium poisoning. Dialysis helps some patients. Potassium chloride replacement is important for reasons I've already told you in the pathogenesis. But treatment of choice is Prussian blue orally, 250 milligrams per kilogram per day, which avidly binds to thallium and it is excreted in the motion where it colors the stools blue. So the take home message is whenever you use depilatory creams, make sure it does not contain thallium, lest you end up totally bored. Thank you.